Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we will be talking about PWM which stands for Pulse Width Modulation. This is the first video in the PWM series. Let's quickly draw our PIC32 microcontroller and connect it to a resistor and the LED which will help us with this exercise. Thanks to the LED, the effect of pulse width modulation can be visualized. Our pick is powered and supplies the power to the LED through the 3.3 volts line, therefore the LED stays permanently on. Let's present this situation using the graph. The power coming to the LED will be displayed on this graph we have on this axis a voltage expressed in volts and on the bottom axis a time expressed in seconds. We've got the graduations which will help us understand what is happening with the voltage over the time. That will be powering our LED through the resistor. As we said at the beginning we are supplying a constant 3.3 volts to our LED which on the graph will be represented by a constant line. There is no change in time and the LED stays permanently on. Now let's create a sample square wave that will be driving our LED. As you can see we will focus on the voltage pulses within one second of time. This way we can better understand all the definitions and calculations. We have two pulses. When the pulse reaches the peak voltage, in our case 3.3 volts, the LED will be switched on. When the pulse drops to the bottom value, for instance 0 volts, the LED will be switched off. As mentioned before, there are two of those changes called pulses within one second. We can use special software for simulation of our circuit and observe that supplied voltage to the LED is at constant 3.3 volts. There are no levels change in the time. We will use a pulse generator that supplies the power to our LED. We can observe on the graph that the period time is 500 milliseconds. We have two pulses within one second. Let's have a look at the datasheet for our microcontroller. To generate the pulse width modulation pattern we will use the TCC registers special for the motor control section. Under the pinout section we can describe all the pins that we will need for our project. Section 34 of the datasheet describes timer counter for control module and its application. You can read more in this section. We will direct our attention to TCC0 module for these tutorials as it offers the highest number of channels and waveform outputs. We will set this module as a normal pulse width modulation and PWM. We can see that it uses the single slope PWM generation. We will use that settings including all of the calculations that will be related to our project. Let's have a look at our connections. We have eight LEDs connected through the current limiting resistor to the selected outputs of our PIC32 microcontroller. And now start MPLAB X IDE. Click to start a new project and make sure you select the new AMP Lab Harmony 3 project. Click Next. 
select the path for the Harmony 3 files location and type in the name for your designated project name. Complete the project creation to your desired specification. Start MPLAB Harmony 3 configurator and wait for it to load. When Harmony is ready, click Peripherals and then scroll down to add the first module which is going to be TC0. This timer will help us to create the time delay for the later on project. Now go to TCC and select the TCC0 module. Now go to MHC menu, scroll down to Tools and select Clock Configuration. Go to Clock Easy View tab, then shift the view to the right so you can see the peripheral settings. On the peripheral clock configuration, click that just to confirm what clock settings have you got for your peripherals. As you can see, for our timer counters and timer counters control, we have 48 MHz clock. Let's go to MHC menu again, Tools, and select Pin Configuration. In this configuration, we will select all the pins that are relevant to our TCC0 module. We can select those pins in the Pin Diagram menu as shown in here. We can also use a pin table to select the relevant pins. Let's scroll down to the very bottom where the TCC0 module sits. The relevant pins, click on them to turn them green and they be assigned to the TCC0 module. You can also use a pin settings to assign the pins to the relevant function. Let's select TCC0 module for the last two pins. Please notice that you cannot select whether they are input or output. They are automatically selected for us. Now let's configure TC0 module. I will expand all of the functions first so you can see what I've selected. All I'm going to do here is just untick enable timer period interrupt. I will leave this time as a one millisecond because this is what we want. Let's configure TCC0 module next. As per previous one, I will expand all the functions so you can see the settings that are selected in this module. Now coming from the bottom, we're not doing anything in here, so just collapse it. There's no changes for this as well. And nothing in the pattern generation, let's collapse it. Dead time stays as it is. And we will not select anything for the outputs. In the channel 3, I will untick the enable dead time option. I will repeat the same for the channel 2, for the channel 1, and for the channel 0. This will help us to start introducing those channels in a more understandable way. We we'll leave default channel outputs as they are. Now let's go to the operated mode and in here make sure you have PWM selected. In the prescale option, we select and divide by 1024. We have select PWM type. Just make sure that it stays at NPWM as we discussed previously. In the period value, I'm going to use some values first that are going to be easier for us to understand what is happening in the PWM module. 
I am typing the value of 23,436 as a period value. Please notice that this will change our PWM frequency to 2 Hz. We will see this figure later in a moment. Let's go to our project tabs and at the bottom one let's select the project settings. In the project properties make sure that connected hardware tool is our Curiosity Nano board. Let's click apply and OK. In our project files go to source files, expand that and double click on the main.c file. This is the main file that we will be using to paste our code. To enable pulse width generation, we have to enable the module with the functions that are related to the TCC0. Let's go to header files and expand this. Now let's click on config default peripherals and then our tcc0 module double click on the plib tcc0.h in here the function that we're looking for is tcc0 pwm start copy this function to our main.c file and paste it underneath the system initialize Let's go back to our drawing for a moment. We will add some more definitions. This section of time we will call a pulse width. This section of time we are going to call a period. From this sketch we can see that there is one on and one off state contained within the period time. We can control or modify the on state by changing our pulse width. As we've seen before, we need a certain pulse width value to control the on state. This is done by selecting a duty value number. I'm selecting 12,000, which is roughly a half of a period value. Now, let's not forget to generate the code. Once the code is generated, let's send it to our PIC microcontroller. As a result, we have diodes blinking. The on state, which is the pulse width, is controlled by the duty value. We have selected that to be at about half of the period, and that's how the diodes are blinking. Now let's change that value from 12,000 to something smaller. So I'm going to choose about a quarter of the period value, which in my case would be around a 6000. Again, let's not forget to generate the code and program the microcontroller. And now as an effect, we have a faster blinking diodes. And now let's type in value that is close to the top period value and quickly generate the code and program the microcontroller. Because the duty value is almost corresponding to the period value, the LED period on is much longer than the off period. Now we know how to successfully change the duty value, thus modulate the pulse width. Let's connect some probes to our output and observe the effect of the pulse width modulation on the logic analyzer. Let's take few samples and analyze our generated waveform. We can see that as expected, the on value, which is our pulse width, is longer than the off state. 
the on lasts for about 0.44 of a second out of half second. Frequency of 2 Hz tells us that we have 2 on pulses and 2 off within 1 second of time. You may be wondering why the two LEDs are pulsing. Why not one or why not all of them? You may remember that at the beginning of our coding we have turned on all of the TCC0 relevant pins. We have turned them on and set them to active for this peripheral. Data sheets are not very clear about this, therefore I have created a table to help you understand how are the pins broken into different functions and channels. For instance, our channel 0 that we were controlling at the moment controls pins PA04 and PA14 to which our two LEDs were connected. Let's have a look again. This red LED is connected to pin PA4 and blue LED is connected to the pin PA14. Let's use the other channels in our exercise as well. By typing any random duty value we are directing what is the pulse length for the on state. I'm going to type in the values decreasing from the channel 0 to channel 3 and we will use the LEDs to see the effect. And now we can observe the final effect of our programming. We can see that those two LEDs belong to channel 3, this is channel 2, channel 1 and our original channel 0. And that brings us to the end of this first part of PWM video tutorial series. In our next video we will learn how to apply our PWM knowledge to control this simple brushed DC motor with the help of a few MOSFET transistors. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you shortly. Bye!